This webinar is part of the Virtual Christian College Fair sponsored by NACAP, the North American Coalition of Christian Admission Professionals, um, and findyourchristiancollege.com. The virtual fair platform is open 24 hours, seven days a week from now until November 18th. You can explore anytime you like, and you can uh, be sure to join us later today as college reps will be in their booths waiting to talk to you. We'll also have other live sessions on November 9th and November 17th, so watch your email for more information on those dates. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Janet Perdiner, uh as our presenter this evening. Um, after 22 years, Janet recently retired from Grace, Grace Christian School in Anchorage, Alaska, where she spent the last 17 years as the guidance counselor. Hosting the first Anchorage Christian College Fair in 2010 helped students with their post-high school plans um, and meeting numerous college admission representatives and touring campuses, as well as serving on the NACAP board have been a few favorite highlights from her counseling career. Janet and her husband enjoy spending as much time as possible with their kids and grandchildren, as well as enjoy time on their boat fish on their boat fishing and camping and exploring uh, the many trails around Anchorage and Kenai. Janet is currently on staff with NACAP serving the, the K-12 member schools. So Janet, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm going to go to my, uh, share my screen here really quick and get to my presentation if that's okay. Are we there? Can you Looks see that? Looks good. Yeah, I can see it. Go ahead. Thank right. you so much. Um, okay, so welcome. Uh, we're going to talk about the overall college search process, and it's usually the initial process, and I can tell you fit is key. Um, does your student or do you as a student, do you potentially fit that campus? So you're looking for a campus that's going to fit you, what you're all about. And as well as that, those colleges are looking for what fits their campuses too. So that's, it's a two-way street there. However, we're going to talk specifically about your fit. Uh, and so that uh, covers actually academically, how do you fit on that campus? Socially, how do you fit on that campus? And more importantly, spiritually, how does that campus community fit your spiritual life needs and values? And so without any more ado, I'm going to continue on and talk about academics. So creating that list, this is an initial a list of schools you create in, in just the initial stages of starting to look at colleges and, and post high school education options. And so, you know, you're going to create a list of about five to 10 schools and, uh, and start just digging in and looking at those schools. You're not applying, you're just searching. And so the reason why fit is so important is because we want a sustainability and uh, the tools and ability to sustain a in that college campus community for four years. So that's why we're really looking and researching these schools for that fit potential. So uh, the first thing you do is, uh, as you're searching schools is consider your current high school. What are you doing? What have you done in high school? What are the results or record of your high school? Your grades, uh, your GPA, so grade point average uh, is something to consider and is, is con looked at by colleges, but also your test scores. Um, how have you done on the SAT, ACT, and CLT? And then the high school requirements. What type of classes have you had to take in high school? And then what what uh, type of classes have you uh, elected to take in high school? So those are all things that are, are you need to look at and, and see if what you've done in high school matches what you're searching for in college. And so that, again, because that's fit, you've developed a habit in high school and you're going to continue that habit on into college. And so uh, you're going to start searching schools within that academic ability. Uh, you know, you're going to look at their, um, their average schools post, their average average GPAs of the uh, recent accepted students. And so is your GPA kind of in the ballpark of that average GPA of recently accepted students? Is your SAT, your ACT, or your classic learning test score in that average of those recently accepted students, as well as those classes you took? So that's kind of what you're looking at. So you're going to search schools with that, that academic ability in mind. Those are your, the majority of schools you consider are going to fit into that, uh, that, um, um, niche, if you will. And then, uh, you know, another thing I would always tell my students is consider the research of a, a a reach school, a school that's just just above your uh, your average GPA, you know, and then just see what they require. Why not 
research that and look into that. And then also you, mo you might want to have a safe school on your list of schools. And that's a school that uh, you, know, you apply to that institution and you get in. Those are usually community colleges or here in Anchorage, that would be our local university here in Anchorage, where they provide all kinds of professional development and post high school education for the community. And so that's a safe school, a school that uh, you know, you're sure to get it, be accepted. You apply, you're accepted. So those are just some ideas to consider. And then of course, always, if you have an idea of what you want to major in in college, be sure you're considering those colleges with that major. You know, colleges, can, they offer all types of degrees. Uh, and, but, you know, if you've got a specific interest um, in a, a, a small, uh, like uh, aviation up here in Alaska, we have a lot of aviation. And so, you know, if you're interested in an aviation degree or an engineering and aer aeronautical engineering degree, then you need to look at a school that offers that major, uh, you know, and not every, that's an expensive major. Not every institution is going to offer that. So that's another consideration and academically, finding a school that's going to fit your uh, needs, what you're searching for, uh, meeting your high school academic standard or, or record, and then also what you're interested in choosing uh, to st study in college. And so with that, I'm going to go on to social. Social aspect is probably the biggest um, and most visible part of a college campus we see. So, uh, you know, and, and, and and that's important to uh, our development as we go from a 17, 18 year old on into uh, into our 20s and young adult life. Uh, you know, what are we doing socially? And so you're, you're considering campuses for that purpose as well. And I can tell you one of the number one reasons, uh, and this fits under that social category, is location, location, location. Where's that school located? I used to think that was just really important to Alaska students, uh, but it, it's not, as I've traveled and talked to students all over the country, it's really not. Uh, it's interesting that it, it's important to almost every high school student. You know, uh, some students, let's be real, they want to kind of get away from home and experience what that's going to be like. And so some students want to stay close to home. So those, again, that location is really important. Also in that consideration is the size of the campus. Do you want a, a small campus, a, a campus of 1,500 to 2,000 students? Or do you want a mid-sized campus, you know, 5,000 students? Or are you looking for 10,000 plus students? You know, those are all things to consider uh, when you're in that initial college search. You're, that's, you're trying to figure that out. What's that fit? What do you think you're going to really uh, like and how are you going to fit into that uh, campus? So location, 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 really important. And then again, how do you get there? If you live in Southern California and you're looking at a school uh, at Cedarville University, how do you get to Cedarville, Ohio from uh, LAX? You know, so how do you get there? Planes, trains, and automobiles, it's a real thing. And so considering that, that, uh, especially, you know, I tell them, I would tell my parents here in Anchorage, um, as I've gone all over and visited campuses, that, you know, it's one flight on Alaska Airlines, of course, that would be Seattle or PDX or LAX or Denver, you know, or, uh, you know, or one, two flights, but Alaska Airlines flies there. So, you know, because everybody has an Alaska Airlines card up here, a credit card, and are, they want those miles. So, you know, that's uh, things to think about. How do you get there? Another consideration is those academic clubs and organizations that interest you. Again, things that maybe you've done in high school and you want to continue on into college. Uh, say um, you were interested in um, uh, some type of chess club or, uh, you know, a disc golfing club, you know, those or, or you play a lot of disc golf. Does that campus offer, do they have a disc golf course on their, on their campus, you know? Uh, so those are things to look for and consider. That's part of that social aspect that's going to help contribute to that fit for you on that campus. And if they don't have that, would they mind getting, uh, you know, having that? I had a student that went to um, Jackson University in Tennessee and um, they started, a, there were a ton of Alaska kids there and they started a disc golf 
um, group and actually club on campus. And they actually traveled to other colleges and played disc golf everywhere. So anyway, uh, just some, some things to think about and, and look for. So not only do they have them, if they don't have them, are they interested in allowing you to start one? So think about those types of things. And then of course, opportunities for service, uh, travel and internships. You know, um, do, do they offer mission trip opportunities? If that's something you've done in high school and you want to continue on, can you do that on your college campus? Also, um, semester abroad, traveling for learning, uh, doing a semester abroad. I had a student that uh, majored in accounting at George Fox University, and she spent a semester in Paris, France. And so those types of things, is that an opportunity you have? Those are things you're searching for in your overall college search to help determine that fit for you. So, and then of course, uh, there are other really important things. For instance, um, the fine arts. Uh, most college, I can't think of a college campus that doesn't have music or theater or some type of fine arts program. Um, of course, design and art and things like that. So, you know, if that's, if you played an instrument in high school and you want to continue that, you know, ask that college, even if I'm not majoring it, can I play in, in this ensemble, you know, audition and play in that. And so uh, the answer is usually yes, they're always looking for people to participate in there. And sometimes they even give money for those types, even if you're not majoring in uh, that, um, in those types of fine arts, you know, a lot of times they'll give a scholarship money for students that belong Along to certain um, audition type of ensembles. So look into that, consider those things. Um, athletics and intramurals. Uh, there's actually going to be a webinar later in this series. Uh, I think the third week of this series uh, on college athletics. But if you play a sport in high school and you desire to perhaps play after high school and college, you know, looking at those sports opportunities, athletics. So are they NCAA or NAIA or NCCAA? You know, what what do you what level do you want to play at and continue that sport? If you don't want to go at that level and you you want to um, still participate in something or play something you've never done before, uh, intramurals. Every college has an intramural program on their campus. And uh, for instance, my one of my sons played flag football at Corbin University in Salem, Oregon, and uh, he loved it. He played there and it was very casual. However, they did play other, they, they would travel to George Fox University in Newburgh and play their flag football team. Uh, you know, so there were a lot of opportunities for that, that are just, uh, you know, kind of fun. You're not committing a lot to, but you know, you, you go out and have some fun and get outside and, and meet new people and travel to other institutions. So consider those things. Uh, as well. Another really important thing about uh, FIT is the dorm life, uh, really looking at that dorm life on that college campus that you might be interested in and see if that's something that appeals to you. Um, I think that that uh, oftentimes is, uh, can be a struggle for some students, uh, that living situation. So looking into that, um, checking that out, see what you, uh, what appeals to you. There's the traditional dorm life, of uh, multiple rooms in a hall with maybe shared bathrooms. And then now the trend is uh, apartment styles on, you know, as campuses are building new dorms, uh, you know, they're more apartment styles. So just checking that out again and, and searching those things, you're looking for that fit. And then of course the dining facilities, every campus has uh, one to multiple dining facilities. Uh, Chick-fil-A is a big thing on college campuses these days. And so uh, we don't have one up here in Alaska. So I always enjoy going to the Chick-fil-A at a college campus. Uh, so um, just checking out the facilities, the dining uh, facilities. Uh, colleges, if you visit a campus, they more than likely will treat you to a meal in their dining facility. So uh, you get to experience that and see that and see and, and try to vision, envision yourself being in that uh, dining facility every day, multiple times a day, or see what the options are. And uh, let me tell you, they're very different from when I went to college <laughs> multiple years ago. So uh, it's it's exciting. I love it. I love all the options they do nowadays. So so that's kind of an overview of socially uh, what to expect and look for on college campuses. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the spiritual aspect of it. So a Christian university is, is an institution where all teaching faculty sign a statement of faith and they offer and require Bible courses and credits. So they don't just have a theology department. Uh, many, many schools have theology departments. 
departments, even secular uh, universities. Uh, but it's more than that. It's all their faculty sign a statement of faith. And, um, and the advantage of that is the openness of talking about that in your classes. And sometimes, you know, if, if, if that's part of the assignment or if it comes up or if it's applicable, having those opportunities to talk about your faith in a Christian at a Christian college and university is very um, open and um, it's actually exciting because you're hearing from other students too and and where they're coming from. So uh, private Christian institutes institutions are there are many of them and they're all um, great institutions and so some of them are church denomination affiliated and so even though many students are from all different types of backgrounds. Uh, uh, faith backgrounds on those campuses, that that uh, institution that's specifically affiliated with a denomination is their foundation is in that denomination. So checking that out, is that something that uh, is part of your faith? And if not, is it a, do you mind, uh, you know, will that be something that you would, would struggle with? Um, generally it's not, but you know, it's worth looking into and checking that out. Also, again, as I said, all the teaching faculty sign a statement of faith. What an advantage for your students to be able to be mentored and, and um, have um, a relationship with a teaching member that has the same faith, that shares that same faith that you have. So um, also chapel opportunities. Uh, every Christian college has multiple opportunities for chapels, student-led worship, student-led um, teaching and sharing in chapels, all part of that opportunity. That's huge on a, a campus and just an opportunity to, to attend those chapels, um, you know, is, is unique to Christian colleges and universities. I know when I visit a college, um, that's probably one of my favorite things to do is to attend their chapel and see what they're doing in chapel and, and, and participating in that worship service. So all to consider, uh, you know, does this campus align with your faith and values? Can you see yourself there for four years in that community um, and in those in that faith community and with those values? And so uh, just that's, again, part of that overall fit. Also, too, if you are considering a public institution, just know that every public institution and even Christian universities have multiple uh, parachurch organizations on them like CREW. CREW used to be Camp, Campus Crusade for Christ and now that's called CREW. There's CREW for students, CREW for faculty at multiple uh, campuses around the country. So InterVarsity of Christian Fellowship, another organization, Athletes in Action, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, all of those. There's multiple, there's Baptist student unions, uh, Catholic organizations, there's all kinds of organizations. So when you visit colleges, ask them that, what type of Christian organizations do they all have an opportunities for students, Christian students on their campus, ask those questions. So big opportunity there and a huge part of that fit is that faith. Um, I wanted to just go into the actually searching a little bit here. Um, so I'm gonna click on find your Christian college. Uh, it's a live link and it takes me, can you still see my screen? Okay, hopefully it'll come up here. There it is. So this is uh, the link, uh, the website, Find Your Christian College. And so I'm gonna click on search here because I wanna show you how easy it is to do this. I love this search engine, um, school search. You can put in a name. If you know a, a Christian college by name and you wanna search that, you can do that. You can type in a major, say you're you're in a kind of a small major you're interested in and you wanna type that in and, and check that out. This is a great place to do that. If you get the guide, the magazine, it actually, has this huge poster you can fold out with little tiny print and find those majors too. Here's a better way to do that. <laughs> Go in and click on, type in your major and see what colleges come up. Um, so I'm gonna actually do that and show you, I'm gonna type in forensic and I've done it already. So you can see forensic science, cause that's kind of a, a small major, but you can see all the colleges that come up, uh, Bluefield University and where they're located, uh, the state they're located in. So California Baptist, Cedarville University, I mentioned already. Uh, so uh, 
Concordia Dort. Uh, anyway, and there's multiple pages. So you can go ahead to the second page as well. So lots of opportunities to pull that up and look at that. So I just wanted to show you that. Don't be afraid. You're just searching. You're not applying. You're just searching. So check out this website, find your Christian college, and you can look at um, athletics, what type of athletic programs, colleges by state. I'm going to get out of that because I want to show you. I'm going to click on this and notice there's no Alaska. This is why a lot of my students go to the lower 48. But I, I'm going to type in Colorado and there's going to be uh, Colorado Christian University comes up and Dem uh, Denver Seminary in Colorado. So you can see what comes up. Um, actually, I'm going to click on this. One thing I was uh, looking at this earlier and I'm going to click on admissions. Um, oh, they had a pop-up window that said they had a free application. So, you know, costs money to apply to college. And so anytime you see that, you click on these schools and you see that free application, jump on that and get that code and apply for that college, you know, so, or talk to your counselor. A lot of times they know people at those schools that can uh, help you with that. Um, so I'm going to go back to my uh, PowerPoint here and can you still see my screen? Okay, thank you. Um, sorry, let me uh, keep going here. And I'm just going to uh, have a miscellaneous slide where I'm going to quickly talk about a thing, a few things. Uh, Christian University, I talked about that already. Attend a college fair. That's a great way to talk to uh, multiple schools, uh, representatives from colleges and universities. Be sure and have your elevator spiel ready to go. Know what you want to say. Have good questions. Uh, that impresses them like you would not believe if you have good eye contact and good questions for them and have, can have a good conversation with them. Uh, if you have an opportunity to visit a campus in person, uh, that is probably the best way to help determine that fit. Attend a class, attend chapel, eat in the cafeteria, check out the dorms. Uh, they'll require you to visit financial aid. Usually some schools give uh, um, visit scholarships, so ask about that too. Uh, it's well worth that um, trip to that institution if they give a visit scholarship if you end up going to that school. Never pay sticker price for college. I hear all the time that that school costs $40,000. Well, yes, that's the sticker price. It's like buying a new car. You never pay the sticker price for that. So the college is the same way. And if you've done well in high school, leverage, leverage that record of high school you have with your good GPA, your good test scores, and get that merit scholarship at that college. And, and those are 10, 12, $14,000 of scholarships just for doing well in high school. That's a return on your investment, by the way, uh, you know, your uh, investment of time in high school. So private institutions offer way more scholarship money than public institutions and leverage your high school success for those scholarships. Always, 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 always do what's required in that application process and always, always, always do what's recommended. With that, um, any questions that I can answer for you? Please uh, feel free to use the, the Q&A um, little icon at the bottom of the screen. If you have a question, you can go ahead and type it in. Um, I do have a question for you, Janet. Um, oh. Yeah, in the meantime, if anybody's typing anything in. But so do um, students have to take the SAT or ACT or CLT if the school says that they are test optional? Uh, yeah, you know, they don't. However, I would say that um, if... If you're not taking those things, then they're looking at, they're scrutinizing your application more intensely. So they're scrutinizing the classes you took or didn't take in high school. They're scrutinizing your activities you did. What type of leadership opportunities have you been in during high school? What, uh, what have you, service type of service uh, projects have you done? So that gets a way more scrutiny than if you uh, were not, to not take that. Again, like I said, always do what's recommended and always, always uh, take those tests. It shows your interest and your um, uh, willingness to do whatever it takes to get into that college. Awesome, thank you. And then how many colleges do you recommend that students apply to? You know, like I said, it costs money to apply to college. And so, I, you know, I think five is a lot. So definitely three. Four and five is the most that I would recommend to my students. However, sometimes, you know, um, students can't decide. And I think applying to more doesn't always help you decide. It just might confuse you even more. So considering um, that I, I five is good. 
10 is a lot. So especially if you're having to pay for that application. Also, wanna, uh, let me say one other thing about that application fee. A lot of colleges have early application deadlines. They start in uh, by the end of November. So we'll, we'll see our first early application deadline either the 15th of November or the 30th of November. So look at those colleges, see what kind of early application deadline they have. A couple of advantages to that is they waive, a lot of times they waive the application fee. And the other thing is you're in the first round of applications they're looking at and they notify you sooner. So you get, a, you get results quicker. And they say that right there, if you meet that early application deadline, not early decision, not early app, um, uh, just early application. It's an early app deadline. And it's just an advantage for you, the student. Hopefully the application fees waived. And I would rather have my application looked at at the beginning of the process than at the end of the process of applications when, when uh, blurry eyes and uh, they've read through a number of essays. And, you know, so that's just a huge consideration. Think about that. All right, great. Um, and I guess, you know, people may be wondering, you know, how do you quote unquote visit a college campus? What does that mean? Oh, that's a great question. I love that question. Every admissions, uh, you know, every college has a website these days and they uh, have an admissions link. So you click on that admissions link and you can easily find visit. It, it'll be in big and bold. And they usually, a lot of them have somebody designated just to dealing with students who want to come and visit their campus. Um, you can do a drive-by if you want. However, uh, by actually contacting their admissions office, it does it, and it does get you on their radar, number one, but also too, if they do offer a visit scholarship, then, then you're in line to get that if you end up going to that institution. So click that visit link, set that up. Usually it's a form you fill out and then somebody gets back with you, um, generally speaking. So if you're uh, just traveling through and you wanna stop and visit, uh, you know, it's usually they'll work around your schedule and help you out. Uh, so uh, click that link, visit link on that admissions page on that college website and do a visit. Visit. Also, I, I think I already said, if you uh, fly into an airport, generally there's a campus within an hour of any major airport in the country. So um, take advantage of that. Uh, you know, coming from here, Alaska, you know, my parents, they actually do that. I've been telling them for years to do that. And they actually do that because, uh, you know, just taking advantage of being in certain parts of the country uh, and driving through a campus. I had one family that actually their car broke down right by Grove City College. And they did, they, while they were waiting for the tool truck, they took all six of their kids and toured the campus at Grove City. So that's awesome. That's very fun. And I know some colleges will also offer visit scholarships. So maybe give you an incentive of $500 or $1,000 scholarship to visit yep. their school. So each college yep. is different. So check it out. So, well, and yeah. they also will pay, some schools will pay reimburse you for your airline ticket for the student. So uh, think about that. I know Dort University does that. Uh, if you live so many miles away from their institution, they'll help. Uh, help you get to their institution and visit their college. Yeah, so. Yep, I know other schools do that as well. That's awesome. Well, I know we're just about out of time, so I um, I don't see any other um, questions. So we'll go ahead and, and close uh, this session, but want to let you know that this, this session will be available on demand. And so you're going to be able to um, go back and watch it another time if you'd like and share it with your friends. Um, also encourage you to visit the virtual Christian College Fair that is going on um, through, uh, I think, November 19th is what I saw. So go and check out the, the booths at the, the Christian Colleges. And if you happen to miss the virtual fair, um, findyourchristiancollege.com is where you go to do a uh, Christian college search. So Janet, thank you so much for uh, being here this evening. I really appreciate you and all your expertise. And to everyone else, um, and to Janet, I wish you a wonderful evening. Thanks so much. Thank you.